Hi, so we're going to do a question on myocardial infarction and as usual we're just going to underline the main key points in the question and then try and answer um, what the question is asking for. So a 65 year old man presents with central pushing chest pain for the first time. So um, in this question immediately the thing that should stick out is Number one, a 65, and a central crushing chest pain. So instantly we should be thinking cardiac related. He is transferred immediately to the closest cardiac unit to undergo a primary percutaneous coronary intervention. So immediately is important, and a primary percutaneous coronary intervention, so a PCI. There is thrombosis of the left circumflex artery only. Okay. Angioplasty is carried out and a drug eluding stent is inserted. So angioplasty stent. Once it's the most likely changes to have occurred on ECG during admission. Okay. So first we need to differentiate and see what cardiac pathology he has. Um, from the management that he's had. So he's had an immediate percutaneous coronary intervention, um, an angioplasty. We can assume it's going to be uh, either a STEMI or an end STEMI. Um, so if we go on to the diagnosis first to see how you would diagnose any cardiac pathology, you would need to do troponin. Um, and if that is increased, then usually that will indicate a positive cardiac cause um, we're going to look for any signs of ischemia so that would be things like chest pain uh, or reduced um, or rather sorry um, low oxygen sats uh, any signs of cyanosis or anything like that then we're going to look for ecg changes and for that it would be things like st changes or um, any sort of bundle branch blocks and then we're going to look for chest x-ray and finally we're going to do blood so we're going to do a full blood count to use an ease and ESR and ESR is something that quite a lot of people miss off but it's quite an important um, test that we do and if the levels are low then usually that will be indicative of heart failure a lot of people will think it's if the ECR um, levels are high, but no, actually, it's when they are low. Um, that's when it shows signs of heart failure in a cardiac setting. There are other causes for it as well. So what would the management be? So the management would be um, a little mnemonic that I remember is Mona. So it would be morphine, oxygen, but only if it's needed. So if oxygen is... 98, 99, 100, um, 97 even, you wouldn't give oxygen, it's not compulsory. Um, some guidelines say that if it's around 92 or below, uh, or 93, 94 or below, then give oxygen. Uh, you would give nitrates, so you would give a GTN spray usually, and that would be given sublingually, so under the tongue, and we would give aspirin, which would be an antiplatelet in this instant. So um, if we go and look at STEMI, so for a STEMI, the mnemonic that you need to remember is Mona plus one. And we need to remember that STEMI is the dangerous one in a way. So a STEMI is the one that we need to uh, treat immediately. It's the one that needs immediate intervention, immediate management. Um, so it would be morphine, oxygen, nitrate, aspirin, plus another antiplatelet. So usually the one that's given is clopidogrel. Then they would go for immediate PCI, so that would be percutaneous uh, coronary intervention. And so that would be angioplasty. And um, I've drawn a balloon here because it's usually a balloon that will be inserted into the femoral or radial artery. And... Um, to prevent it occluding, so to prevent the um, blood vessel from closing up, sometimes a stent will be inserted, but not always. 
now some hospitals don't actually have access to um, a PCI um, so they, they're not able to provide PCI because they don't have the equipment or they don't have the professionals to um, perform this bridge procedure. So if a PCI is not available, then they will undergo thrombolysis. <coughs> now, if we go on to an anstemi, uh, so an anstemi is one that is less invasive. And for that, you would just give your mona, so it would be your morphine, your oxygen, your nitrate and your aspirin. Um, again, you can give an additional antiplatelet if needed, so that would be something like clopidogrel, but usually only in high risk patients. Um, the <coughs> second management, um, or the second procedure, if you like, that you would do, so you would do a coronary angiogram, and that can be done at a later date. It's not something that needs to be done immediately, so <coughs> for example, um, there was a patient I know who went abroad, had an NSTEMI, and he didn't want treatment in that country, so he actually came back about 36 hours later to the UK, and he had uh, an angiogram 36 hours after he had had an NSTEMI, so it's something that's less invasive. Um, so, I mean, a way that you can remember it is that there's an N in front of the STEMI, so not as important. Obviously, it still needs to be treated, but it's not, it's less invasive than a STEMI. Okay, so obviously anyone that has had a STEMI or an end STEMI, they will need to go um, through secondary prevention. And <coughs> again, a mnemonic that I like to use is <coughs> a BAS, which is a name. Um, I think it's a name of quite... Um, somebody in like the Kazakhstan area so um, not, not very good with my history but uh, again secondary prevention would be your aspirin plus one so that would be something like clopidogrel again you would give beta blocker because most of these patients will be quite tachycardic so beta blocker to control the heart rate um, and then you would give your ACE and your statin as well because they're quite high risk patients Okay, so now if we go back onto the question, um, because a PCI was performed immediately and this word should stick out to us, um, we know that this was a STEMI. Um, so it wasn't an end STEMI, so it was an ST elevation, not a non ST elevation. So if we can um, cross out the ones that are ST depression because we know it's not any of those. Now we're left with uh, V1 to V6, V5 to V6, um, and then leads to 3 and AVF. Now a mnemonic that I like to use, and I have made a video about this, is I like to write all the leads down and then I like to circle them. I have done a video which will tell you step by step how to do this and it makes life so much easier. It's such an amazing little mnemonic that you can use, a little tips and tricks. So um, your leads one and your leads AVL is your lateral leads. Um, your leads two, three and AVF is your inferior leads. Your V1 and your V2 is your septal leads. Your V3 and your V4 is your anterior leads. And your V5 and your V6 is your lateral leads again. And then we go on to this bit here. And I use the mnemonic Lisa L, and then um, so we've got our circumflex artery here, circumflex artery here again, and we've got our right coronary artery, which is um, associated with the inferior leads, and then your septal and your anterior leads are associated with your left um, artery, well, your left anterior descending arteries. So we're looking for the circumflex artery, so we're looking for this one and this one, okay? So your circumflex arteries are your lateral leads, so it's our, the ones that are labelled in red. Um, they haven't given us the option of leads 1 and AVL, so we know it's not that one, but they have given us the options of V5 and V6. So we know that in this instance, the correct answer is D. So this is the correct answer, okay? So if we go on to the second question, 
which is a 55 year old man has just arrived in A&E complaining of 20 minutes of central crushing chest pain so again age is significant 20 minutes which is a duration that's very significant than central crushing chest pain cardiac cause which feature is most indicative of an MI at this moment in time again I use a little mnemonic to remember this um, to know what changes are ischemic and what changes are in, um, related to an infarction so this is the mnemonic that i use so in this mnemonic we have um, t wave inversion and st depression so they are both pointing downwards the little points are both pointing downwards and after the i we've got the letter s which is same so they are both pointing in the same direction such as t-wave and your st so they're both depressed so that will show that there is some signs of or there is ischemia so there is a lack of oxygen in that area now for your infarction which is your obstruction of blood um which is obviously more invasive as well so for that we would have st elevation we would have the presence of q waves and we would have high levels of troponin so we would have raised troponin a very study mnemonic but trust me it works <coughs> is that if you look in the word infarction we have <laughs> we have far here which is um one letter short of fart so with the far and the T here for troponin, we have fart. And if anybody ever asks me, think of a word that begins with Q, I instantly think of queen. There isn't many <laughs> words with the word Q, so queen is what comes to mind. So the mnemonic is queens don't fart. Um, obviously they do, but in this sense, no, yeah, they don't. So it's... Um, so infarction, queens don't fart, and <coughs> your ST elevation. So you've got your ST elevation, and um, we know it's ST elevation because we've got a T here. So we're just going to assume that, you know, your ST is quite high. So it's going to be an ST elevation, and also think of a queen higher, um, in terms of a hierarchy. They're quite high up. Um, in the eyes of society so your ST is going to be elevated you've got the presence of Q waves <coughs> and you've got raised troponin and that will point towards um, an infarction so if we go back to the questions so <coughs> we're going to look for anything that will um, point towards the direction that we've got an infarction in this instance because an MI usually is an infarction so there is an obstruction of blood which is our main concern. Um, we know it's not inverted T waves because that's signs of ischemia. Raised troponin, I mean instantly we, we wouldn't even think about troponin because that would be, that would take time to complete so um, troponin usually raises slightly after an MI has happened. So the presence of Q waves, again, it's not something that you would see immediately. So we are left with ST depression and ST elevation. And as we said before, an ST depression shows signs of ischemia, whereas an ST elevation would show signs of a myocardial infarction. So it's C. Thank you for watching.